Well, welcome everybody. My name is Marty Hershock. I'm the Dean of the College of Arts, Sciences and Letters. And this is one of my very favorite events of the year. I love to see what my faculty colleagues are up to. And I think you will find this particularly entertaining. So I'm Pam McCoslin, and I'm going to be telling you about um, our media's influence on rape myth acceptance and uh, the reactions to a sexual assault victim. We know that negative reactions that victims receive when they've been sexually assaulted has negative consequences on health. But less research has looked at the factors that lead to rape myth acceptance that influence the reactions that the victims get. I'm Ilir Miteza, Professor of Economics and Social Sciences. Dollarization, what is it? Let's talk briefly, uh, briefly about that. A dollarized economy is an economy that has excessive reliance on foreign currency. People hold a lot of foreign currency and people also use a lot of foreign currency for transactions, especially for big ticket items like real estate, cars, and so on. Um, so that's the, that's the focus. How serious is dollarization in a country like Albania? In 1968, the Northern California Youth Choir recorded a vanity album consisting of rearranged church hymns. The 500 copies they paid for uh, were to be sold to family and friends. An underground rock DJ heard the arrangement of Oh Happy Day and the rest became history around the world. All I can say to you is um, she has a line in the song that says the half has never been told. I've not even told you a quarter of what I can tell you about this song and its impact on the gospel industry, on gospel music, uh, around the world. So I put that uh, three project I was trying to do, it's a bit ambitious. Uh, nanoparticle assembly, biosensor, and core shell nanoparticle. So we need to organize in a one-dimensional, two-dimensional, or three-dimensional fashion. Our focus is going to be two-dimension, and going forward, we are going to use those two-dimensional nanoparticle assemblies for catalysis, uh, nanocatalysis. Then we are going to see generating things uh, on a spherical surface for cancer remediation in heat absorber, and then we are going to look at the biosensor. So for the last 11 years, I've been part of an interdisciplinary research team that has studied the impact of stigma on abortion providers' lives. Today, I'm just going to share some of the findings from one of our most recent projects, a case study in conducting research on abortion in a large Midwestern academic medical setting. We developed a short survey to assess attitudes towards abortion, abortion providers, various abortion laws that restrict access, and items assessing the experience of taking the survey in a work setting. Extreme events, namely hurricanes, or typhoons, or cyclones, or the Australians call them willy willies. Paleotempestology, there is no better archive for hurricanes and sediments. They are beautiful reconstructions from all those layers. And with the aid of radiocarbon dating, you can see how many hurricanes happen on centennial to millennial timescales. I want to talk to you about the, the union of two major trends in our society. The first relates to genealogy. Uh, genealogy has, uh, in the study of it and the interest in it, has simply exploded with the development of the internet because databases all over the world are available. The second major trend is the use of DNA in my field. DNA is the most important development in criminal justice ever. How many of you uh, have submitted your spit to Ancestry.com or 23andMe? Oh, gotcha. All right. <laughs> My talk today is called A More Nuanced Perspective, State Supporters in the Islamic Republic of Iran. And we don't actually know much about these Iranian state supporters. But what we do know, unfortunately, is uh, from journalistic accounts that are often distorted by Orientalism. And that's a way of seeing a difference between East and West that paints Muslims and Arabs and Iranians and others in the Middle East as exotic backwards, uncivilized, and even dangerous. So my research is an attempt to move beyond the sensationalist headlines on Iran by exploring everyday life among non-elite, state-supporting families. I'm Caleb Seifert. I'm a professor in behavioral science. The title of my talk is Stay Away, It Hurts, How Attachment Ambivalence Contributes to Physical Symptoms in Young Adults. 
So if you want to avoid illness, health psychology has some things that you could learn from it. Health psychology, is one of its most consistent findings is there's a social immune system and people who have better relationships get sick less frequently. So we know that social support reduces risk, but what are the specific mechanisms through which that occurs? So in this project, I'm interested in how some musicians get categorized as serious artists and granted artistic license. And I became interested in this because the internet has made so much music available, it feels infinite. I argue that who gets categorized as artist is very crucial for who gets to have a long career, who gets to cross genres, stay in the public realm, be creative, and basically who gets to be the weirdo who has a long career and who's dismissed. So uh, this is a metaphorical introduction. I'm actually not going to crush a can, not on my head or anything like that. The metaphor that I want you to think about is when you have a can and you crush it, the top goes down on the bottom and the sides sort of crumple up, so it's the distribution of the crushing that we're interested in. All you have to do is think about, A, this matrix is like a boot, and the uh, can is something the boot's going to crush, and the flat image is what we're gonna pay attention to. I'm gratified that it has some application to other people, but for my part, it really sort of feeds something inside, and that's why I do it.